Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome or welcome back to Chef Vic Cuisine. Today, we're making baba ganoush. Now this is one of my favorite dipping sauces and it was so good it made the cover of this cookbook. Now, baba ganoush is a spread mix of eggplant, tahini, garlic, and more that pairs so well with so many different accompaniments. So, let's get started. So jumping right into this recipe, we want to preheat our oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit or 232 degrees Celsius. And we want to place our oven rack in the upper third portion of our oven. And for this baba ganoush, we're going to need two pounds worth of Italian eggplants. And that can be either one large eggplant or two medium sized ones. But with your eggplant, you want to slice it in half lengthwise and then brush the cut sides with a drizzle of olive oil. You now want to place the cut sides of the eggplant face down on a parchment paper lined baking pan. And it's really important to make sure that, that cut side is face down so that your eggplant doesn't dry out during the baking process. And we're going to bake the eggplant for 38 to 40 minutes or until the inside of the eggplant is very tender and the skin has collapsed. So once removed from the oven, the skin should look like this and we want to allow the eggplants to cool before scooping out the flesh of the eggplant. And so while that's cooling down, let's prepare the rest of the ingredients for the baba ganoush. Starting off with two tablespoons of lemon juice, and you can normally get that amount of juice out of half of a large lemon. We're also gonna need two cloves of garlic that we're gonna mince, and two tablespoons worth of chopped fresh flat leaf parsley. Also reserving some additional parsley for garnishment. But do your best to chop up the parsley into very fine pieces. And with the garlic cloves, I like mincing them using a garlic press, but you can feel free to use a sharp knife to mince them as well. Hey everybody, just wanted to drop in real quick to say I appreciate all your support in watching the recipe thus far. I hope you're enjoying it. And if you are, make sure you smash that like button for me. It helps boost the channel's performance in the YouTube algorithm so that more people can see this recipe. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to be notified when my next video drops. And stay tuned until the end of this video for a sneak peek of the recipe coming next week. Now that we've taken the time to prepare those ingredients, our eggplants should have cooled enough for us to now flip them over and scoop out the inner flesh with a spoon, discarding the eggplant skin. And so the cut sides may look burnt, but you just want to move those aside to reveal that tender inner flesh that we're looking for. And if you have it handy, what I like using is an avocado spoon to scoop out the eggplant. It just makes the process much faster. And if you're not familiar with the inside texture of an eggplant, you're looking for a slightly spongy and fibrous flesh. Now that we've scooped the flesh out of both sides of our eggplant, you want to place it into a strainer and use a fork to press out any remaining liquid from the eggplant. And once you've done that, you want to allow the eggplant to rest and drain for a few minutes. And it's at this time where you can discard the drippings from the eggplant. So in a medium sized bowl, you want to add in your drained eggplant, followed by the minced garlic and the lemon juice. Stir all these ingredients vigorously with a fork to break down all the large pieces of eggplant. Mix this for a couple minutes. And once the consistency looks like this, you want to add in a quarter cup of tahini and mix that in until it's fully incorporated. Once your consistency is looking like this, while stirring, you want to gradually add in a third cup of extra virgin olive oil, creating an emulsion between the oil and the rest of the ingredients for the baba ganoush. Keep mixing all these ingredients until the baba ganoush is pale and creamy in appearance, just like this. And now that the base of a baba ganoush is formed, you want to stir in your chopped parsley, one teaspoon of salt, and a quarter teaspoon of ground cumin. Mixing all these ingredients together until they're well combined. And you can always add more salt to personal taste, but I think one teaspoon is enough. And with that, our baba ganoush is set. And to make this a complete dish, let's create some accompaniments to complete this meal. I really like red bell pepper strips when I eat baba ganoush. So you wanna seed your red bell pepper by chopping it in half and removing the inner seeds. And then with a sharp knife, 
create long thin slices along the length of the red bell pepper to create those strips that you want. Another fresh food item you can use for your baba ganoush is cucumber slices. And with that, you just want to take a large cucumber and slice it along the bias to create plenty of cucumber slices to use in this dish. And finally, what's a good baba ganoush without some delicious pita wedges? And now you can create your own pita bread if you want, but you can also use store-bought pita as well. And you just want to take a sharp knife and create smaller bite-sized wedges that you can dip into the baba ganoush. Now that we have all of our dipping items prepared, you want to transfer your baba ganoush into a serving dish and then garnish it with a drizzle of olive oil, some extra parsley that we chopped up earlier, as well as a dash of paprika. And for a final garnish, I love adding on just a handful of pine nuts to the baba ganoush. Transfer your baba ganoush to a serving plate and add on your red bell pepper strips, your cucumber slices, as well as your pita wedges. And with that, the baba ganoush is ready to be served and enjoyed. And just like that, you've made baba ganoush right at home. A delicious dipping sauce with so many amazing Mediterranean flavors. I'm sure you're gonna fall in love with this dish. And if you make it at home, be sure to tag me at, at Chef Vic Cuisine or hashtag Chef Vic Cuisine so I can see how tasty your dishes turn out for you. And one more tip I want to give you all in regards to selecting your eggplant. You want to always choose eggplants that are shiny, smooth, and feel heavier than they look. Those are often good signs that you're picking a good eggplant to make baba ganoush with. As always, this recipe and many more can be found in my cookbook, Chef Vic Cuisine Volume 3, Upgrading Your Inner Chef. And that's available on Amazon, and I'll be sure to leave a link to that in my description box. And feel free to click the pop-up on your screen for more information on that as well. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this recipe. And if you did, make sure to smash that like button for me. It really helps the channel out and shows your support in the best way. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Victor and welcome to Chef Vic Cuisine. I like to create new recipes each and every week that you can make at home for yourself, your family, or your friends. So if that sounds interesting to you, make sure you hit that subscribe button too. And sharing is caring, so if you enjoyed this recipe and think someone else will too, feel free to share this with all your family and friends. And stay tuned for next week where we make an amazing crowd pleaser, rhubarb and cheese crostinis. This is a truly eye-catching dish and I can't wait to show you guys how to make it. Well, thanks again for watching. I truly do appreciate it. You're all the best. Check out my recipes on my page now. YouTube thinks you'll like this video, so let's see if they're right. And I'll see you next time on another episode of Chef Vic Cuisine. And until then, peace.